So yes, moving on to the next question. The next question as you see is question number 14. Read it and then we will do it together. What does it talk about? It talks about a 9 year old boy who has multiple itchy edematous wheels short duration of 2 days no respiratory difficulty which is the best treatment tell me which is the best treatment what is the diagnosis first you make the diagnosis this is a boy who has wheels if someone has wheels for a short duration of two days wheels itself takes you to a diagnosis this is the primary lesion which is found in urticaria so the diagnosis here is urticaria now urticaria can sometimes also have a respiratory difficulty there can be histamine release in the airways also causing bronchoconstriction and difficulty in breathing like you see in asthma so if there is urticaria with only cutaneous involvement without any dyspnea what is the treatment of choice here in this question you have to do two things one you have to make the diagnosis two you have to think of the treatments so diagnosis by virtue of wheels being mentioned in it is urticaria two patient does not have any respiratory difficulty three best treatment would you give anti helminthics as the best treatment no would you give systemic steroids you would give them if the patient had dyspnea if the patient had respiratory difficulty then you would give systemic steroids as a means to control the bronchoconstriction but if there is only skin involvement then antihistamines become the treatment of choice clear in a patient of urticaria with only cutaneous wheels the treatment of choice is antihistamines if the patient has respiratory difficulty give a shot of hydro IV hydrocortisone it settles if the patient is in intense anaphylaxis there is a drug reaction or the patient is absolutely not breathing then you sometimes have to give adrenaline also but in case of only cutaneous lesions antihistamines are the drug of choice what is urticaria urticaria is a type of type 1 hs there can be multiple causes it can be idiopathic or it can be caused by infections drug induced associated with connective tissue disorders there can be any cause clinical features primary lesion is a wheel which itches then you can have respiratory difficulty if there is systemic involvement treatment antihistamines first line are the second generation second generation are the first line yeah like this so second generation are the first line ones like levocetrizin fexofenadine ibastin these are all the non sedating first generation antihistamines they are the treatment of choice if the patient doesn't respond to them you increase the dose or you give these second generation antihistamines then the third line treatment would be steroids cyclosporin methotrexate but the best treatment the first line treatment antihistamines clear to everyone yes antihistamines are the first line treatment I have an image of urticaria to show to you see if it was an image based question then this is how wheels look like okay this is how wheels look like these will be erythematous blanchable with a 
surrounding pallor. This is the typical description and most important thing these will be evanescent. Means one lesion will disappear within 24 hours. It will disappear within 24 hours. Importantly evanescent. Importantly at the meters with the surrounding pallor. Okay. Most important is to identify it was an image based question then also this is urticaria. Treatment of choice second generation non sedating antihistamines. Clear to everyone? Causes you should know. Treatment you should know. Correct? So we move on to the next question. What is the next question? Read it and then we will do it together. This is a 42 year old engineer who has developed redness of the glands with radial fissuring of the prepuce. KOH shows pseudo hyphae and budding. Which systemic illness should he be screened for? So first you have to make the diagnosis then you have to think of the association. So this is a lesion on the glands with redness of glands plus radial fissuring of prepuce. Very, very, very typical description. You cannot have a question which is describing it easier than that. Very typical question. Radial fissuring plus redness. Give me the answer to this. Give me the answer. What is it that they are talking about? Okay, by chance, you don't get to know. You have never heard of it. You don't know what the disease is. Okay? You don't know what the disease is. So, you don't know what it makes out. Next hint in the question is the KOH. Next hint in the, in the question is KOH. KOH shows pseudo hyphae plus budding. Next question is pseudo hyphae and budding. Where in KOH would you see pseudo hyphae? In this you know, right? By chance you don't know what the diagnosis is, but you know the KOH finding which shows pseudo hyphae and budding. Pseudo hyphae and budding are seen in yeast infections. Candidial infections, the typical KOH finding is pseudo hyphae and budding. Like this is the candida, it will keep budding like this. So, this will look like a pseudo hyphae. So, now we know that this is a candidial infection of the glands and the prepuce. That is all we know. We do not know the exact diagnosis, but we know that it is a candidial infection of the glands. In case you want to know the diagnosis also, then it is called as candidial. Baleno posthitis. Balenitis and posthitis together, candidial baleno posthitis. That is the diagnosis. I didn't know it, but I could decipher the KOH findings, which is pseudo hyphae. Third thing, association. What is the association? In which conditions do you see candidial infections more commonly? We have all read this since the beginning of our MBBS. Where do you see candidial infections more commonly? You see candidial infections in people who are on long term antibiotics or people who are immune suppressed like HIV or transplant patients or chemotherapy patients. Then where else do you have immunosuppression? You have it in diabetes, diabetic patients. These are the most common 
associations of Canada. These are the situations where you most commonly. So, what is there in the question? What does the question tell you? The question tells you that it's either pulmonary tuberculosis, DM, systemic candidiasis or CRF. The answer is DM. This is the situation. If it was a woman on long term antibiotics, she would be more prone to candida of the vagina. If it's a man on long term antibiotics or he's a diabetic, HIV, oral candidiasis or candida of the glands, take the hint from the question. No diagnosis still identifies that the KOH is that of candida. Candida is more common in diabetics. And then you reach the answer. So the answer here is B, diabetes mellitus. Clear to everyone? Diagnosis is candidial balanopastitis. This is not an STD. Candida is a commensal. In case of a favorable environment due to these predisposing factors, it will cause the disease. Candidial balanopastitis. How would you treat it? Since it's the east, it's candida infection, your azoles come into the picture. You give topical clotrimazole or oral fluconazole, etroconazole, ketoconazole. Clear to you? Clear to everyone? Good. Should we move to the next one? Yes. Slate like discoloration of the skin is seen in. Where is slate like discoloration of skin seen? What does slate mean? Slate means blue black. Have you ever seen a blackboard? Blackboard appears blue black. So this means a blue black discoloration of the skin is seen in. Blue black discoloration of the skin is seen in. Blue black discoloration of the skin is seen in minocycle. How will this question be asked otherwise? It will be asked like a 17 year old girl had taken treatment for acne. She developed blue black pigmentation of the acne scars. What is the drug that she was using? Drug that she was using is minocycline. Very important point. Please remember this can be asked in any form, like in an acne patient or otherwise, minocycline is side effect of pigmentation. What are the other side effects of minocycline? It causes lupus and photosensitivity, discoloration or pigmentation. Clear to everyone? Good. I have a slide which shows you the other things. What are the drugs that cause pigmentation? You actually have to know the drugs that cause pigmentation. OCPs cause melasma like picture. Minocycline causes blue black pigmentation especially on the scars in an acne patient. Antimalarials like chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine this can also cause pigmentation. Chemotherapeutic drugs, amiodarone, in the chemotherapeutic drugs you mainly have bleomycin causing flagellate pigmentation like lines, so like a flagella. Then you have amiodarone, amiodarone causes grayish pigmentation on photo exposed sites. Carotene, clofazamine, clofazamine you are asked, it causes red brown pigmentation plus ichthyosis. So you are actually asked a question on this, on this, on this, this 
and this very very important here the setting could be a patient who has taken a treatment for arrhythmias and he develops a grayish pigmentation on the face what is the drug that he was prescribed a patient of acne develops pigmentation a patient of leprosy develops pigmentation so they can actually give you the clinical diagnosis in which these drugs are used and then also ask you the drug okay so this is what you have to remember very very important question very important question please keep it in mind clear to all yes I also have a photograph to show you these see this is the flagellate pigmentation that I was telling you looks like a flagella caused by bleomycin then the bluish black pigmentation acne scars can also be seen on the legs and the arms minocycline then this grayish blue pigmentation on the photo exposed sites in a patient of arrhythmia amiodaron carotinemia will be the sallow color which will be the yellowish orange color of carotinemia seen in hypothyroid patients seen on anticonvulsants this is how the typical image of the pigmentation looks like clear to everyone now you will not forget good can we move on to the next question yes we move on to the next one moth eaten alopecia is seen in easy one common one easy and common moth eaten alopecia no doubt in this the answer is secondary syphilis I have an image of this it appears as if insects have bitten the skin as is insects have eaten some areas that is why this is called as moth eaten alopecia clear moth eaten alopecia seen in secondary syphilis clear to everyone what are the other findings that you have to remember about secondary syphilis it has a rash which is generalized can be any form but you don't see any vesicular pustular lesions then you have these coppery brown macules on the palms and soles then you have condyloma later in the perineum then you have mucus patches in the oral mucosa please remember all these points about secondary syphilis coppery brown macules is asked loma later is asked these are the most infectious lesions mucus patches is asked these are the important cutaneous manifestations there are other manifestations also but remember this for now moth eaten alopecia everyone yes good this is an image if they give you in an image based question then also you know it is moth eaten alopecia next question an 18 year old female with hypopigmented patches near both ankles what is not used for treatment first you make the diagnosis actually in the question it should be depigmented patches depigmented patches you look at the arm you see you look at the leg you see that this is a completely white lesion depigmented very easy to diagnose what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is vitty ligo the diagnosis is vitty ligo depigmented macules treatment do you use topical clobitazol? Yes. Do you use topical tacrolimus? Yes. Topical methoxicillin? Yes. 
what you don't use this you don't use topical noin in the treatment of vitiligo you use topical steroids tacrolimus Microlimus, then you use oral steroids, cyclosporin, azathioprine. Basically, it's an autoimmune disorder, so you have to immune suppress the patient. If you give phototherapy, then in phototherapy, you can give narrow band UVB therapy, 311 nanometer treatment good results if you intend to give uva therapy then uva therapy you can give with oral soralanes or topical soralanes when you give this with oral soralanes then it is called as puva when you give this with topical soralanes then it is called as puva sol and what is the example of these soralanes methoxysoralane or trimethoxysoralane these are actually your photo sensitizers they intercalate with the DNA you put the light they kill the DNA they immunosuppress the patient so you get a question on topical steroids calcineurin inhibitors oral steroids phototherapy UVA. They also ask you the wavelength of UVB. Narrow band UVB 311 nanometer UVA with oral soralin or topical soralin. So this is important in the treatment of vitiligo. Please remember these points. Do not miss them. Moving back to the question. Moving back to the question. This is the treatment. I told you topical steroid you can use, I told you calcineurin inhibitor you can use, photosensitizer like methoxicillin you can use. So the answer here is topical tretinoin, this is not used. Clear to everyone? Yes, no? Very good. Moving on to the next question. The next question is a 19 question what does it talk about it talks about a five year old girl with a short duration of the lesion histopathology as shown what is the diagnosis these days this is a very important question because they ask you the histopath also there is no clinical hint in this question there is no pointer towards any diagnosis in the question the only way you answer it is by knowing what this histopathology is. So you have to know this histopath. Look at it, think what it looks like. Does it look like an SCC with a central crater? Are there any keratin pearls here? No. Does it look like a polyp? A polyp will look like this. Here the lesion is like this. What is the lesion actually like? Let's draw the lesion. The lesion is like this. This is how the lesion is actually. Right? This is how it is. So, what does it look like? Does it look like an SCC? There are no keratin pearls. Does it look like a polyp? A polyp is smooth like this. No. Does it look like keratoacanthoma? We had just seen keratoacanthoma. Keratoacanthoma would look like this, a central crater filled with keratin. What does it look like? This looks like molluscum contagiosum. So the answer here is B, M, C. I told you it will be a nodule with a central umbilication. It is very difficult to make anything out of this question because it doesn't give you a text hint. 
doesn't give you any hint in the text. This is only a histopath image based question. Either you know it or you don't know it. But even if you don't know it, just look at this question. See what it shows you. You see these damaged keratinocytes. You see this central dip with eosinophilic structure in it. The diagnosis is that of molluscum contagiosum. A difficult one because you don't actually see the histopath images that commonly. But still not very difficult. Slight clinical picture in mind lets you know how the biopsy will look like. See, this is the clinical image of histo of molluscum. These are the papules with the central these are the papules with the central umbilication. That is the histopath. So this is how molluscum looks clearly in the histopath and this is how it looks in the image. So this is the only way you can identify it if you know it. Pearly white dome shaped umbilicated papules which show pseudocopnerization. We have already discussed molluscum. Histopath also you have it in the image. What is the treatment? Treatment self resolves in 6 to 9 months. Otherwise you can give TCA application needle extirpation cryo you can do a where do I go? Yes cryo. So this is how you can treat it but this is how the typical clinical picture is and the histopath image is answer is B. Molluscum contagious. Clear to everyone? Good. Wow, this is a long one. Read it nevertheless. False about neonatal lupus is They are talking about neonatal lupus. Annular skin lesions with complete heart block in an infant are strongly suggestive of neonatal lupus. It is caused by rho autoantibodies transferred from the maternal circulation to the fetus. Mother should be warned that NLE may develop in future pregnancies. Yes, rho antibodies are present in 10%. So, if I were to teach you NLE, then neonatal lupus mothers with SLE, they have rho la antibodies they become pregnant these are ig g type of antibodies so they go to the fetus in the fetus they cause complete heart block plus skin lesions skin lesions are typically SCLE type annular with lesions around the eyes which are seen as raccoon eyes with complete heart block they are also rho la positive so 100% of the neonates will be rho la positive the mothers will be positive that is why they cause complete heart block you can also identify it by fetal echo 
or when the baby is born then you do echo in the baby all so on birth any mother who has sle you do fetal echocardiography when the baby is in utero or if the baby is born then also you do the echo try to look for congenital heart block most common cause of death in these babies how do you get the hint you see the body patient will have like the baby will have small annular scaly plaques typical of sle eyes around the eyes also there will be lesions that will look like the eyes of a raccoon so body annular lesions eyes will be raccoon eyes congenital heart block rola positive diagnosis is that of neonatal lupus and since the antibodies are circulating in the blood of the mother whenever she gets pregnant there is a chance of these going into the baby there is a chance of neonatal lupus in the future babies all so so let's read it annual lesions with complete heart block strongly suggestive of neonatal lupus right caused by raw heart antibodies transferred from the mother to the baby right mother should be warned that nle will develop in future pregnancies correct ro auto antibodies are present in approximately 10% of nle patients no present in a much higher number of patients clear so the answer here is d clear good moving on to the next one yes a lady with bilateral read it then i'll read it with you bilateral buccal reticulate white streaks with pain on intake of spicy food no history of tobacco but shows amalgam on the third molar this is actually molar molar what is the diagnosis so what is the hint in the question in the hint it gives you a reticulate oral lesion plus pain on spicy food plus dental amalgam if you remember i already told you as the causative feature of oral lichen planus amalgam then pain on spicy food reticulate picture there is absolutely no doubt in the diagnosis the diagnosis is oral lichen planus there is absolutely no doubt in the diagnosis diagnosis is oral lichen planus very typical description if i were to teach you olp then also i would give you this clinical picture question also gives you this clinical picture no doubt in the diagnosis oral lichen planus and why do they tell you that there is no history of tobacco so that you rule out leucoplakia right how would candida look like candida would look like a pseudo membrane leucoplakia would also look like a white plaque but patient will have history of smoking and there will be no pain in leucoplakia what will aphthous ulcer look like aphthous ulcer will look like an ulcer with red base and it will be very very painful even otherwise not just on intake of spicy food the answer is like in plainness clear to everyone yes no good very typical answer very typical question very typical description clear to you yes should we move on to the next one good interface dermatitis is histological feature of what does interface dermatitis mean interface dermatitis means that your stratum basale is involved dermo epidermal junction is involved and dermis is involved this is the interface like your epidermis dermis so this is the epidermis this is the dermis 
interface means where these two meet so this area is inflamed this is called as your interface and the involvement will be that of basal layer DEJ and dermis interface dermatitis what does typically happen typically happens is vacuolization of basal cells plus liquefactive degeneration of dermoepidermal junction or the basement membrane plus a band like infiltrate in the dermis these are the typical findings of interface dermatitis typically seen in lichen planus you can even identify when I talk to you about the histopath this is typically seen in lichen planus so this is seen in LP also seen in EM also seen in fixed drug eruption fixed drug eruption EM LP typical causes of interface dermatitis asked in your exam please remember here the answer is LP but they can also ask you Rhythma Multiforme fixed drug eruption and so on so this is a typical image of how the interface dermatitis looks like band like infiltrate in the dermis and the basal and the DEJ is involved typical histopath of lichen planus clear to you yes moving on to the next question please read this sea bather eruption is typically seen in difficult question you don't read it that commonly sea bather eruption typically seen from the bite of jellyfish actually the thimble jellyfish typically the thimble jellyfish like your question can also be like somebody was swimming in sea water and then they have a red rash with typical itching what is the diagnosis a red rash with itching the answer is sea bather eruption caused by the sting of a jelly fish clear to everyone it can be any type of rash but it will be very itchy not a difficult question but still please remember sea bather eruption jelly fish clear to you all yes moving on to the next one please read this false about tuberculoid leprosy false about tuberculoid form of leprosy please read this then we'll read together if I were to teach you tuberculoid leprosy then also I would give you the same points here the immunity is very good body limits the infection to one side so you have one to five lesions only then since the immunity is good it damages the nerves the lesion is hypo aesthetic there is decreased sweating and decreased hair okay then the nerves are enlarged 
since the immunity is good the lepromin test is positive good immunity means there are well defined granulomas around the nerves also AFB is negative slit skin smear is also negative so in the tuberculoid leprosy immunity is good limited number of lesions with enlarged nerves in the lesion it is well defined hypoesthetic no hair no sweating sometimes you can have satellite lesions also means the infection is trying to spread generally seen in the borderline tuberculoid form infection is trying to spread pseudopodia like margins but that is mostly in the BT not the pure TT lepromin test will be positive SSS will be negative well defined granulomas AFB negative clear this is what you have to remember about tuberculoid leprosy nothing major in it there is one pole tuberculoid very good immunity very limited lesions the other pole is the lepromatous leprosy low immunity multiple lesions entire skin is infiltrated right so this is the spectrum of the Ridley Joplin classification tuberculoid falls in the good immunity part yes so now we move on to the question let's read it resistance to M leprae is poor large number of organisms are present skin lesion and extensive no pregnancy is a precipitating factor due to reduced immunity correct satellite papules are found BT yes loss of sensation is the rule nerve involve enlargement is there palsies are common yes so all this is correct about the tuberculoid spectrum this particular thing is seen in the lepromatous spectrum so this is false about tuberculoid leprosy all these are correct answer here becomes A clear to everyone I also have an image of tuberculoid leprosy see the lesion is well defined well defined then you see these pseudopodia like margins and you see these satellite lesions these would be seen in the BT1 if it was a completely well defined it would be TT clear to everyone if an image is given to you then also you can make the diagnosis in the false true also you know how tuberculoid mainly looks like clear good should we move on to the next one have you all seen the image this is how the image is even if it was an image based question you could make the diagnosis from this good next question pseudo pollard is synonymous with pseudo pollard is synonymous with pseudo pollard actually means cicatricial alopecia any cause of cicatricial alopecia you actually call it pseudo pillard specific entity is also there that specific entity is called as pseudo pillard of Brock in this question they are basically asking you this pseudo pillard of Brock that is also a cause of cicatricial alopecia please remember pseudo pillard of Brock this is an idiopathic entity there are multiple multiple patches of scarring alopecia they look like this 
multiple patches of scarring alopecia. Appears like dog feet in the snow, like a dog is moving in the snow and there is no inflammation, no scaling, no redness, only smooth patches of scarring. That is all that you need to remember of pseudopallard of Brock. They give you questions on this and this. No inflammation, no scaling, no redness. Very smooth looking clean patches. Look like dog is walking in the snow. Small, small reticulate patches on the scalp. Generally seen in women. Pseudopallard of Brock. Clear to everyone? Yes? Good. Should we move on to the next one? Yes. So the answer here is cicatricial alopecia, pseudopillard of Brock. Alopecia mucinosa and this are due to deposition which damages the hair and causes scarring hair loss. Traction alopecia is due to tight pulling of hair in the ponytails. Generally seen in girls and in negroids, negros who do braiding, those tight ponytails that they make, those small small ponies that the negros make. So they pull the hair, when they pull the hair in this temporal region here, peritotemporal, you pull the hair, you make a ponytail, slowly you get alopecia here which is traction alopecia due to the tight pulling in the ponytail. So traction alopecia, cicatricial alopecia, pseudopillard of Brock. Clear to everyone? Yes. Next question. In which condition you see candidiasis? Difficult one, if you know it, you know it, if you don't know it, then you don't know it. But in which condition mucocutaneous candidiasis is seen? The answer here is this. In which condition mucocutaneous candidiasis is seen? So mucocutaneous candidiasis is seen in autoimmune hypoparathyroid. You must have read of the polyglandular autoimmune syndromes. You must have read of this polyglandular autoimmune syndromes. Must have read this in medicine. They are two types, type 1 and type 2. Sometimes a type 3 form is also there. You have these polyglandular autoimmune syndromes most common is the type 1 then you have the type 2 also rarely you have type 3 what do you find in type 1 type 1 mainly you get 1 2 3 you get mucocutaneous candidiasis then you get autoimmune hypoparathyroidism thirdly you get adrenal insufficiency means Addison's so you have adrenal insufficiency mucocutaneous candidiasis autoimmune hypoparathyroidism which is your type 1 type 2 what do you get type 2 you all here also you get adrenal insufficiency along with that hypothyroidism and 
type 1 DM. This is more of a medicine question but you should still know because candidiasis is mentioned here so this comes in dermatology also. So type 1 and type 2 polyglandular autoimmune syndromes. Mucocutaneous candidiasis falls in the type 1 along with parathyroidism and adrenal insufficiency. Clear to everyone? Yes? Difficult question. If you know it, you know it. If you don't know it, then you don't know it. So the answer here is autoimmune hypo parathyroidism. Right? Clear to everyone? Yes. Good. Should we move to the next one? Yes. The next question is the plucked chicken appearance. Plucked chicken appearance of the skin prominent in the neck and the flexures is seen in. Do you see the plucked chicken appearance in psoriasis? No. Do you see plucked chicken appearance in IV? No. Incontinentia pigmenti? No. So even if you don't know the answer, you can guess it. You know it. Excellent. The answer is pseudoxanthoma elasticum. Clear? Plucked chicken appearance of the skin. So what exactly is PXC? You read it more in ophthalmology than in dermatology actually. Very few of you, you will reach that chapter in the book where pseudoxanthoma elasticum is mentioned. Never mind. What is it? This is a disorder of elastic fibers. It's a connective tissue disorder in the sense that your elastin is defective. Elastin is defective. You have this plucked chicken means a very thick leathery form of the skin in the neck in the flexures plucked chicken appearance then you have eye defects and you have vascular defects what do you have in the eye in the eye you have angioid streaks dilated blood vessels angioid streaks because they also don't have the proper structural integrity so you have angioid streaks but importantly they do not affect the vision. In the aorta there is a risk of aneurysms, aortitis because there also the elastic tissue is defective. So you have vascular, I will write it here. Let's move, I have something. In the skin changes you have the plucked chicken appearance seen in the neck and the flexures. In the ophthal you have the angioid streaks but there is no vision loss appear in the third or the fourth year. Do they interfere with vision? No. Systemic complications you can have them everywhere because of the defect in the blood vessel also. How do you diagnose? You diagnose with a skin biopsy. You do a worn Giza stain which shows you clump elastic fibers. So you do the stain for the elastin. You see this clumped elastic fibers. Question comes on this, this, this and this. Please remember this. Angioid streaks, skin biopsy with worn Giza stain and plucked chicken appearance pseudo xanthoma elasticum correct i have an image also i'll show you the image see this is the plucked chicken or the very leathery appearance a very leathery appearance of the skin in the neck pseudo xanthoma elasticum clear to everyone so sometimes they give you an image based question also they'll give you an image of the neck and ask you the diagnosis or ask you the ophthalmic finding like image of the neck of the patient is given in below what will be the most common eye finding in this patient pseudoxanthoma elasticum angioid streaks please answer right should we move to the next question yes what is the next question the next one is 
something which is like n coup d sabar what is n coup d sabar is seen in sabar means sword have you all watched that movie ghajni i'm sure you have tuck you have a sword line in the scalp so in this also there is a sword like line on the forehead and the hair with laws of alopecia laws of hair so this is seen in this is seen in syphilis have you read no have you ever read this in leprosy no have you read this in scabies no you must have read this in scleroderma this is actually seen in morphia morphia is a localized sclerosis of skin there is a binding down of the skin like you see in scleroderma tightening plus hyper pigment station then if it is involves the hair it will cause scarring hair loss there are multiple morphologies like well defined round linear there is one form which is linear and this linear morphia is called as the n coup d sabar linear morphia is called as n coup d sabar so like you have you must have seen a patient of systemic sclerosis there is binding down of skin it is very tight you cannot pinch it so that is systemic sclerosis if it is only sclerosis involving the skin localized area of skin tightening that is called as morphia it can be round it can be linear it can be different morphologies about morphia when it is linear present on the forehead and the scalp then it is called as n coup d sabar clear to everyone i have an image also see the image see this so this looks as if a sword has been put on the head there is a cut with the sword so this is a linear you see in the scalp it is causing hair loss here also n coup d sabar this is also a cause of scarring alopecia please remember n coup d sabar linear morphia if such an image is given to you you should also identify it from the image it is an important question because they do ask has been asked a few times in the exams still you don't read it that often linear morphia n coup d sabar scarring alopecia type of sclerosis of the skin clear to everyone image is clear you can now answer it good linear morphia moving on to the next question important one again what is it tell me what is it what is it tell me this is also a genodermatosis autosomal recessive inheritance defect is in this enzyme so the gene is recq helicase what do you see here 
you see photo sensitivity plus telangiectasias plus erythema plus short stature bird like faces what does bird like faces means a small face prominent nose and ear so a bird like faces prominent nose and hair then sometimes you can see cafe ole macules dark as well as hyperpigmented macules mild mental retardation may be seen then there is immunodeficiency plus tendency to malignancies this is all that you need to remember about bloom syndrome now what do they ask you they ask you the inheritance the gene the clinical features short stature bird like faces and tendency to malignancy these are the most important points that they ask you about bloom syndrome sometimes it could be in an all except form like all of these disorders show photosensitivity except all of these disorders show all of these are autosomal recessive except so you need to know bloom syndrome autosomal recessive helicase defect photosensitivity telangiectasias erythema this is also called as poikiloderma so they can also ask you all of these show poikiloderma except the short stature cafe ole macules clear to everyone bloom syndrome very important please don't forget so now we move to the question what does the question say which of these is not a feature of bloom syndrome photosensitivity yes photosensitivity can cause this cafe au lait macules yes this why will this be seen in elderly children this is generally a disorder of children because it's a genetic disorder they will present early so you will most commonly diagnose it in children not in elderly and they may not even live till that age because there is so much risk of malignancies here so this is more common in children clear to everyone this becomes the answer here any doubts no good should we move to the next question yes so erythrasma is caused by good one give me the answer easy one but a very common one easy but common easy but common what is the answer erythrasma is caused by erythrasma is caused by corine bacterium minuti simum this is the answer to this what it is erythrasma this is actually caused by a commensal this organism is a commensal but in some situations like diabetes immune suppression this causes the disease how does the disease look like this will be an erythematous plaque with scaling seen in flexures asymptomatic there will be no complaints from the patient 
most commonly in diabetics organism this is what they will ask you organism diabetics this and then how do you diagnose you diagnose it by wood lab where you see a coral pink fluorescence how do you treat you treat with macrolides like erythromycin clavithromycin azithromycin so this is all that you need to remember about erythrasma erythematous plaque with scaling in the flexures asymptomatic coral pink fluorescence on very very important very very important and treatment also they can ask you so this is what you need to remember about erythrasma I have an image also see this image erythematous plaque with scaling more often than not patient doesn't even know that he has it it is so asymptomatic this is actually an indicator for diabetes if a patient with erythrasma comes to me I will think of screening him for blood uh, glucose levels because it is so common in diabetics erythrasma please remember it can be an image based question also and a text based as well and coral pink fluorescence both of these are important clear to you good should we move on to the next one yes question number 31 what is the rarest variety of pemphigus what is the rarest variety of pemphigus nothing much to teach in this question it is a basic text based questions the rarest variety is this this is the rarest and this is the most common so most common is pemphigus vulgaris rarest is pemphigus vegetans these are also more commonly seen but not as commonly as vulgaris easy rarest variety pemphigus vegetans this was actually asked in the aims exam also this is a repeat question right good nothing much to teach here we will discuss pemphigus in detail as it comes forward but the rarest one is vegetans 